Hey guys, Matt Easton here. So first up, I want to say um, condolences or, or commiserations to um, Scalagrim on your injuries. I've got to say, I did laugh a bit when you said about the fact that you got your crutches and then you slipped on the crutches and then hurt your wrist. I'm sure it's not funny at the moment, but probably in a year's time you'll look back and laugh at it. Um, but yeah, injuries do happen in sparring. Obviously, I had a broken finger about, uh, yeah, just over a year ago, um, which actually was my first broken bone ever. I'd never broken anything before. But obviously, for my right hand, I use my right hand a lot. No dirty jokes, please, out there. Um, but yeah, um, it, 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 injuries really freaking suck especially when it's something like a hand or a knee or something you use all the time so sorry to hear that but there is a point coming out of this uh, you raised the question or rather the point of um, drilling uh, time spent drilling in proportion to time spent sparring and this is this is something I've been meaning to talk about for quite a while actually um, is that um, there does seem to be a movement as HEMA is growing and there are more new HEMA clubs there seems to be a movement towards perhaps newer clubs where there isn't so much guidance or perhaps there isn't a um, there hasn't been a lineage of teaching from someone who's done research and sort of um, sort of worked on the sources directly necessarily and people who really want to get, in, get into it and start fighting in tournaments or just go to events and, and um, do sparring there doing a lot more sparring than drilling and this I agree with you completely this is a problem because first of all sparring especially untutored sparring or sparring uh, where it's not based on drilling or some kind of objectives does very often lead to injury unfortunately um, no matter how much um, safety gear we put on or what type of sparring weapons we use as you illustrated, you can get a knee injury, you can twist an ankle, if your footwork's not correct, you can easily fall over, you could theoretically get concussion which could kill you. Um, obviously that'd be an extreme example, but, um, and then if you're using um, in, you know, inadequate gloves for the stuff you're doing, it's very easy to get broken fingers. I have seen so many broken fingers in, in HEMA, it's probably the most common um, serious injury. Um, as well as, of course, just, you know, normal bruises and, and sprains and all of this kind of stuff. So for that reason, the safety alone, it is important that people do a certain amount of drilling in relation to the amount of sparring that they do. Sparring is, you know, even amongst experienced people, even, you know, people who've been in HEMA for years, like me or any of the other instructors out there, we get injuries sometimes as well. My, um, my hip is a little bit funny at the moment, and I have to be completely honest, it's my own fault. It's because I was lunging quite deeply in sparring, uh, last week after teaching, I teach two classes and then there's a sparring session. So I have to teach an hour of beginners, then an hour of kind of intermediate and advanced. And then I get to do some sparring. I get some time to do what I want to do. And um, I basically didn't stretch, I didn't warm up properly because I was, I, was, I was teaching, I wasn't doing anything too rigorous. Um, and then I went into sparring without warming up properly and essentially I've just hurt my hip a bit. I was in a meeting at work um, last week and as I sat down there was a very loud audible crack as I sat down and everyone around the table looked at me like my, like my spine had just broken or something but it was just my hip clicking. It's kind of horrible. But, um, but anyway, so, um, so it is very important to warm up. It is very important to do drilling so that you know what you're doing in sparring or that you know your, your footwork and the way you move your body mechanics is more informed but for me there is a bigger point in this and that is that sparring is sparring okay there are undeniably things you learn in sparring that you can't really learn very effectively or not as effectively in normal dry slow speed or even sometimes fast speed drilling and those are things to do with timing and distance and as I tell my um, students, um, timing and distance make up a huge percentage, I'm not going to make up percentages, but you know, a large percentage of a person's ability to win a fight. A lot of it comes down to time, timing, in other words, um, speed, distance, knowledge of timing and kind of judgment as well, knowing when to, or judging when to do a certain thing or when to stop doing a certain thing. Okay, so those actually are the fundamental things, the techniques, the how you specifically use, you know, how you put a certain arm lock on or how you do a certain disarm or how you do a certain uh, disengage and thrust in opposition. 
all of these sort of things are actually details. They're kind of the icing on the cake. But the cake is made of the fundamentals of, of uh, distance and timing and things like this. Um, the fundamental principles of all fighting, which go through, as I've said before, go through uh, every type of striking art and pretty much wrestling, although it works different. When you're already in contact, it does work a little bit differently because obviously um, distance in the literal sense is, is not that. But um, so it is absolutely undeniable that um, you, you, what you can learn things from sparring more effectively or quicker that you don't necessarily use in normal dry drilling. Um, however, as I said, sparring is only sparring. It is not fighting. Okay, Winning at sparring might be indicative of winning in fighting. So someone who's awesome at sparring is generally going to be someone who's more likely to be good at real fighting. But it's not always the case. Remember that we're not using real weapons. We're not really cutting and thrusting. People don't really react after being wounded the way they would do if they had actually been wounded. Psychology plays a part. The way people react to being wounded or react to threat or react to real danger is completely different in real life to how it is in sparring. Because in sparring you know you're not really going to die unless you're incredibly unlucky. Okay, So sparring is a very different thing. It's a tool. So what I really want to say is that it's part of a toolbox. Sparring is not, or at least for me and for lots of people, it's not the end goal. For some people it might be the end goal and that's absolutely fine. Sparring, the sport, that is fine if that is your end goal. However, in a martial arts sense, sparring is not the end goal. It is a tool. So you have sparring, you have real fighting over there off the screen. Okay, You've got sparring then you've got drilling, but there is something in the middle. And this is something that I try to focus on more in my intermediate and advanced classes. So my beginner classes are pretty much mostly dry drilling. And sometimes with occasional uh, sparring, introductory sparring sessions, tutored sparring sessions. But there is an element in the middle that is essentially a non-cooperative, shall we say, or kind of um, option-based drilling, whereby there is a non-cooperative element involved. In other words, you don't necessarily know exactly what's going to happen. The attacker might have an option of two or three or one or two things to do and you react accordingly. There might be movement involved. You might be not just going through the drill starting in a static position. You might start out of distance. One of you might move into distance and the other person might do a thing and then move out of distance. So you can make the drill more complex and of course it leads towards sparring. So it's very important I think in people's training to fill this middle ground between the dry drilling, basic practicing of the, of the techniques and the movements and you've got sparring over here and then there's the bit, the segment in the middle which is bridging this gap between drilling and sparring. And I think it's very important that people do more of that. Um, and the final thing I would say as well is that sparring shouldn't, in my opinion, necessarily always be done as a completely free-form thing. Sometimes you should have specific rules that you follow, score, you should score it. I find that um, we usually score our hits in, in my club because we found that when people are actually counting their hits and therefore counting hits against them, they're actually more focused and think more about uh, how it's going and they're able to analyse what happened better. When people just spar and don't count the hits, I find that very often they have an overinflated sense of how well they did themselves. Um, so sometimes we score the hits, sometimes we don't. But additionally, you can have objectives within the sparring. So for example, you could give, and this is a very valuable training tool, and it kind of falls into that gap between drilling and sparring that I was talking about. Um, it, where you give one person an, obje an objective. For example, their objective is to try and disarm the other person, or their objective is to only defend, or their objective is to defend and then run away, or their objective is you know, to uh, try and fight their way to something that's on the ground, another weapon for example. So they start off with the dagger, they've got to try and get past the guy with the sword and get the sword so that they're... You know, you can make it fun, you can be imaginative with it, or it can be very basic, like simply your objective is to perform one technique. So you're trying not to get hit, you're trying to hit the other person, but ultimately your ultimate goal is to try and do a thrust in cart, for example. So you can make it as simple and as basic as you like, or as complex and ad adventurous as you like. And these are very, very important training tools. So there we go, guys. Um, some things to think about. And once again, to Scalagrim, sorry to uh, see you're injured. I hope you're back in your feet again fully uh, ASAP. And uh, yeah. 
Thanks guys, lots of interesting things to think about there I think, and I'm sure I'll talk about this topic again in the future. Cheers!